Hi everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today I'm going to cover a question that comes from the internet in general. Can ham radio be hacked? Boy, that's a load of bananas in a big truck, huh? Um, I'm not 100% sure that I've got all the right answers on that, but we'll do it together as kind of a mind exercise and see what true vulnerabilities we might have just in general and how ham radio might open us up to some additional ones. So with that, oh, hey, do me a favor, down below hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed and if you like this video, click like. Any questions or comments, make them down in the comments below and with that, on with the video. Well, can you? I mean, could you really, could you really hack ham radio? I mean, I mean, could you? Think I, what would be hacking ham radio? I mean, just, well, all right. So I have a ham radio sitting on my uh, table here and I'm talking on it and, um, not hooked to anything other than an antenna and power and, and a mic. Uh, I, that's not going to get hacked. And then I started to think about what else I had hooked to my ham radio. Huh, I've got my PC, my computer. It's, it's hooked to my ham radio. Well, what does that mean? Well, all right, so... Could someone access my PC and take control of the ham radio? Then I really started to think about it. And I, I've got to tell you, depending on what you think hacking ham radio is, there's all sorts of answers to this. And I'm going to say that, yes, it is possible to hack ham radio. And let's talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, first off, you're amateur radio, your ham radio, many of them have firmware. And those firmware updates could carry exploits in them. I mean, you know, yeah, we download them typically from the manufacturer, but the manufacturer's website could be compromised. Um, you know, if somebody really wanted control over your radio, they could figure out a way to do it. But... I thought that was a bit of a stretch. So I want to take a more realistic look at this. So I started to think about the ham radio software that I run on my PC. And, you know, I run quite a few ham radio programs. I mean, uh, Log for Old Men, uh, version 2. I, I love that program. But it talks to the Internet all the time, you know. Um, Win for Yesu, that's remote control software, N1MM Plus, contest logging software, FL Digi, digital interface software, WSJTX, also digital interface software, WinLink. My, my God, WinLink talks to the internet natively. It actually has a telnet mode that you can go out to the internet and communicate. Um, Vara, there's a protocol. Um, and a lot more programs. I start to look at this and I go, well, all right, which ones are actually talking to the internet? And I kind of went through everything. And what I found was the only one that wasn't talking to the internet in one way or another with the default install was FL Digi. Now, Log for Old Man 2 does lookups on the internet. It attaches directly to QRZ and uh, uh, QTH and all sorts of other software to do lookups. It directly interfaces for logbooks for old men. It interfaces with all sorts of stuff to update remote logs. Um, it has a lot of trust information out there. Uh, Win for Yesu, well, you know, it is remote software, and it does talk to the Internet to check for updates, as N1MM does, as uh, uh, Winlink does, as Vara does. Um, you know, again, is this the end of the world? Well, probably not, although we can't ever really be sure 
if there are any exploits against this software. And we're getting updates all the time, right? And you know what? Not only do they talk to the internet, but they talk to each other via UDP ports. Um, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. Could something bad, some sort of remote control software for the computer be brought in on one of those updates? It most certainly could. Okay? Now, am I saying that's going to happen? No. I believe the people that work with this software have more sense than that. But, again, if you don't think this stuff happens, well, hey, this right here. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency website, okay, um, the U.S. CERT program. They're the ones that track all of these infrastructure attacks, and they do a pretty good job of it. Um, and this is where major corporations, software um, uh, publishers, white hat hackers, let them know that there's a problem, okay? Um and if we take a look, known exploits, we've got 10 entries per page here, right? And 83 pages. Okay, these are current active exploits that there are hopefully patches for. And these are the things that you're supposed to go and update. So when people tell me, oh, I don't ever update, my God, update if you're computers anywhere close to the internet because this is reality this is what's going on out there uh, but you know that said uh, what does hacking ham radio have to do with this well all right we can look at it two different ways okay a program that you run for amateur radio brings in something as an attack vector that can take over your machine and give a hacker control over your machine to do whatever it wants. Uh, a great example of that is WinAPRS. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but it actually has a full remote shell exploit against it, uh, which uh, those of you that understand what that is, that's pretty scary. That means somebody can get on and execute code and do all sorts of other stuff on your computer. Okay. Um, now, what are the other issues? Okay, uh, your computer could be exploited by any manner, shape, or form, and your software that's amateur radio or ham radio related can be used to control your ham radio, and it could cause all sorts of interesting interference and stuff like that. And, you know, you don't want that to happen. Okay, um, but... For the most case, when we're looking at these things, um, we're looking at basically remote control of your radio. And a lot of us have been trying to do that. A lot of us like the idea of being out in a hotel someplace or a motel, being able to pull up a, a tablet and actually operate on your radio. And there's some radios that do that really well just natively. I mean, my God, they have Ethernet connections in the back of them. However, what are the security problems with that? And I want to go a little bit into that with you folks. Uh, let's talk about the different methods, okay, of remote controlling your radio. Well, you have services like uh, Remote Ham Radio that basically uh, they have people that are renting time on their radio to them and what they're actually doing with it is they're reselling that time on the radio with a membership fee and they have a really nice web interface and all sorts of really cool stuff that allows you to use that radio remotely at remote locations so it's kind of a cool concept when you think about it um, now if you're just using the service okay um, okay, so you're connecting to the service, you're logging in to that service, and you're using an amateur radio. The only fear that I would have from hacking ham radio would be someone compromises your account on the system and runs up a bunch of time and you get a giant bill, because it is billed, believe it or not, by the minute. 
okay? And that's the minute that you have, that's the number of minutes you have control over it. It's not the number of minutes transmitting, all right? Is this a neat idea? I really think it is. Is it something that, uh, you know, I recommend that you try? Eh, probably not. Not me, at least. It's not on my top ten list. That being said, there's also other methods to remote control your PC. There are hardware solutions. Remote DX. Uh, I actually looked at this. I, th I thought this was pretty neat. Because basically what it does is it does all the heavy lifting for you. Uh, you have a little deal that you plug in in your shack, the interface with your uh, devices, right? And then it has, uh, you know, another device that you take with you out in the field that you basically use to connect to it, all right? This is a really, really neat setup as far as I'm concerned. Now, what are the problems with it? Well, you got to open a port onto your network, Um and we'll discuss that in a minute. Uh, but again, um, whenever you allow a system to connect to a port inside your network, you're putting everything on the inside of your network at jeopardy, not just the device you're allowing the connection to go to. And we'll discuss that also in a minute. Um, now, I had mentioned uh, WinAPRS, and WinAPRS, I guess, had a huge in exploit. It still does. Um, if you uh, take a look in the download directory, you can see that the last update was 2013. And I don't know if anybody's still using this, but if you are using it and that system's connected to the Internet, I strongly recommend stop using this software. OK, uh, but, you know, due diligence, do the research yourself. OK, uh, just search Win APRS exploits and you'll be able to find a lot of really good articles on that. All right. So where does that leave us now? Well, I'll tell you, it's going to leave us in the world of network security and firewalls. <sighs> but like with every good thing here. It's something that we can understand. Now, this is kind of a typical network, and I have a, well, not exactly typical. It does have a radio hooked to a computer in it, right? So think of it this way, though, that uh, if your computer gets compromised in a way that it goes out, and that's, that's the kind of stuff like when you click on the wrong button and it, all of a sudden the screen flashes and it's like nothing happens and... Um, you know, a month later, your ISP starts grumbling about, you know, 75 bazillion emails that have gone out, that kind of stuff. Um, that's, that's what I'm talking about with this portion of it. Uh, this particular firewall, all right, and the configuration that we actually have uh, does a pretty good job. It basically says to everybody that is trying to connect to your internal network, stay out. This is my network, okay? That, to me, is a really good thing. Now, um, let's say that you're running uh, a interface on your computer that remote controls a radio, and maybe you're using, oh, uh, remote desktop. Uh, we're going to take the example of opening up a web port interface just because they're uh, a little easier to do, and a lot of people do that as a gateway. Um, and really, when you do that, you're saying, hey, come get it on port 80 or port 3362 um, uh, 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 or whatever, whatever port you're using, right, or you're forwarding outside from the outside in. You're opening that up. With that, you're giving someone access not just to your computer, because once when they're on, they're on your computer, they have access to your entire network, including your ham radio and everything else, okay? So, again, this may not be the best way to share something on the inside of your network if you're using it to remote control or whatever. What you're really looking for is you're looking to do a VPN, 
Okay, and all a VPN is is it is now, and I'm gonna do a qualifier here. Okay, look, there's lots of companies out there that advertise privacy on this VPN and you know the Tor servers and all this other stuff. Okay, that is not what this VPN is about. What we're talking about here is a VPN that runs on your firewall that you maintain the access to, and by you configuring it correctly, you can make it so your devices can use a VPN tunnel that's encrypted to get onto your network and have control over that. In other words, we're not saying, come on in on port 80. We're basically saying, hey, you know what? I don't want anybody on this thing but me, and I'm going to use a special uh, program that works with my firewall to allow just me to have access to those ports, okay? And that's really, in summary, if you're running remotely, what you should do. Of course, this is America, at least where I'm at, and, you know, you can do what you want. But I got to tell you, this is the way to do it, okay? Now, setting up a VPN, properly setting up networks, properly doing port forwarding, if that's the way you're going to do it, is way beyond the scope of this video. Anyway, with that, um, hey, a couple things to bear in mind. Can ham radio be hacked? Yeah, sure it can. Everything can be hacked. The only safe device is one that's buried in six feet of concrete with no wires going to it, okay? Uh, can it be hacked without going through some sort of computer interface or network interface? Well, not with somebody getting to it and actually touching it, all right? Uh, like I said, I've touched on a bunch of stuff with the firewalls and the VPNs and the port forwarding and everything else. I uh, encourage you to research that farther. Uh, if you want more information or if you want me to do something on the way VPNs work and stuff like that, leave it down in the comments. Um, with that, hey, thanks everybody. Oh, you know what? Again, don't forget to subscribe. And hey, do me a favor and click the like button if you like it. I'm really trying to get these videos in front of more people, all right? This is Stu, AG6AG, and I hope to hear you out there on the air.